America has seen many decades of talented actresses rising on the cinema screens. But in modern times, nobody might be as impactful as Scarlett Johansson. With her successful film career, music, criticism, commercials, politics, social problems, and even her image, Scarlett has definitely gone through some wild events, continuing with her new film, Fly Me to the Moon. So, how did Scarlett build such a busy career? Why are so many people obsessed with her? And why is she the best actress in modern America? While most babies just learn to walk, Scarlett already decided that she wanted to become an actress, as she was born into a low-income family in New York, through a Danish father and Melanie Sloan. She grew up with four siblings, whilst quickly pursuing her passion for the theater. As she started auditioning at seven, took tap dance lessons, and even started watching films like Silence of the Lambs at the age of eight. Sorry, what exactly means child raising in Denmark? Haha, uh -huh. very funny. Now we continue in 1994. This was the year when Scarlett made her debut in the film North and quickly gained recognition after her roles as James Bond, Sean Connery's daughter in Just Cause and as an art student in If Lucy Fell. She then starred in all of these films for the rest of her childhood and even acted alongside these actors. But the stakes were yet to come. One of her last films before turning 18 was the Oh My God! Eight Leg Freaks, before starring in one of her most well-known films, Lost in Translation, alongside Bill Murray, and then in Girl with a Pearl Earring, together with Colin Firth and Sarah Lee Murphy. She was even compared to a young Lauren Bacall and Marilyn Monroe. I always get the fuzzy end of the lollipop. But during the production of Lost in Translation, this was the first time she kind of felt like she was treated as a bombshell type actor. Not much later, Woody Allen noted that she was very attractive, beautiful and sexually overwhelming. But that wasn't the only thing. In 2004, Scarlett may have gone into overdrive, as she was scheduled in five different acting voicing projects, even making her mother worry that she would get sick from all the work, even advising her to take a break. And it seemed that she did just that. Because Scarlett got involved in a car accident on January 13, 2005, while she was indeed on her way to take some time off. Scarlett returned in less than two weeks. In fact, she was hired to star in Mission Impossible 3, but quit the project because of this. Congrats for the part, Scarlett. Now that you're part of the crew, will you convert to Scientology? Then she would star in three more Woody Allen movies, whilst also shooting the $126 million production of The Island. Then it's not surprising to hear that a 14 hour film shoot is pretty exhausting. Especially if you also star in Christopher Nolan's The Prestige, I think you get the point. After such heavy work schedules, she decided to start something new and started a singing career. Not with the worst of all. Thank you for your cooperation. But it didn't take much longer before she got her fame establishing role as Natasha Romanoff. She also married Ryan Reynolds. Whilst helping to buy a zoo in the meantime. Scarlett went on and portrayed Natasha nine times, starting with Iron Man 2 in 2010, all the way until Black Widow in 2021. Not forgetting these films in the process, because, you know, why not? Well actually, that could have been even more, but David Fincher rejected her for the girl with the dragon tattoo, because David Fincher thought she was too sexy for the part. Now I want to show you a different side of Scarlett Johansson. While working on so many movies, she also puts effort into Cancer Research UK, Age Still Required, Stand Up to Cancer, and even into USA Harvest. She participated in the anti-poverty campaign 1, and in January 2014, she even raised half a million dollars with her Avengers co-stars for the victims of Hurricane Maria. In 2018, she helped to set up the Time's Up project in order to help victims of sexual harassment. And if that wasn't enough, of course it's not. She supported Operation Warrior Wellness, which helps veterans with transcendental medication. Off to a cheeky bit of politics. Although she's independent, she did campaign a fair bit for the Democratic Party. But not like everything should be about democratic principles, or that Republicans are evil or shouldn't exist. 2017 is a good example, 
when Donald Trump just won the elections, stating that she would support him if he works for women's rights and keeps funding the Planned Parenthood organization. Plus for those elections, she simply encouraged people to go out and give their vote. Wow, Scarlett is like a teacher that's giving you homework. It's more than you think. Don't forget that she also stars in commercials for some of the world's most well-known brands, like Calvin Klein, L'Oreal and Louis Vuitton. Oh yeah, in 2021, she proved that she's also someone you shouldn't mess with, as Scarlett filled a lawsuit against Disney because the simultaneous release of Black Widow in theaters, as well as streaming services, would violate the agreement Scarlett had within her contract. Well, then we have to protect it. While appearing in Time 100's list of the world's most influential people. Taking so many actions whilst mothering two children is not something that just happens overnight. Being the highest paid actress of all time and contributing to a $14.3 billion gross worldwide definitely helps her to become an unignorable actress. Some may find her just a sex symbol, others see a larger than life figure. And that's for someone who is, just like me, produced by the Danish.